Hey everybody, Sarah here. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. If you are new here, welcome and thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. This is the first week of a new series that we are doing on love. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you are subscribed so that you never miss a video in this series. Make sure that you are following us on social media, on Instagram, as well as on Facebook. And make sure that you guys have marked your calendars because the love Devotional Challenge will begin on February 9th through Valentine's Day. I'm so excited about it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch the previous video from last week and it will give you all the information about it. I'm so excited. So for this week's video, we are gonna first tackle and talk about what is love? So I'm pretty sure that you've told somebody within the last 24 hours that you love them, right? And we all have a desire for love to be loved and to express love, whether that's romantic, platonic, in a family relationship or whatever the case may be, that we just have a desire. And I believe that God put that in us because we are made in his image um, for love. But so many people abuse the word love and they don't truly have a biblical understanding of what it is because society and culture have tried to make it what they want it to be and try to define it however they want to define it. But we as believers, as children of God, as his followers, we have to do everything based on the word of God. That is our foundation and what we should be rooting everything that we do and say in. So let's go to, you should already know, considering what the topic of this lesson is, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. And I'm gonna start at the first verse. It says, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. And verse four is kind of where Paul gives us a definition of what love is. And it says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So Paul is saying it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what you do. If it's not founded and rooted in love, it doesn't even matter. Because the point of this is we cannot define love how we want to define it. Because so many people think that love is getting beat upside the head, it's getting abused. Because the thing is, everything that Paul listed describes who Christ is. So things we can know that we're loving biblically and properly based on the word of God, based on how Christ has loved us, how he's proven his love to us. He is our example, because the thing is God is love. The very essence of who he is, is love. Everything that he does flows out of the fact that he's love, his patience, his kindness, his compassion towards us, his, the fact that he's so forgiving, his mercy, his grace, it all flows out of the fact that he is love. Because if you replace the word love in this passage with the word God. It is everything that he is. He doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing. He doesn't seek his own way because he surrendered his will to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, if it be any other way, <laughs> but if this cup can pass for me, like, but not my will, your will be done. So this passage tells us what love is and it is an accurate description of God and who he is and how he loves. And since we are to be imitators of God and we are made in his image, this is how we are to love others as well. We are to express love to others in our patience and our kindness and not rejoicing at wrong. So if this is what we're supposed to evaluate ourselves based off of, not based on what culture says, what our feelings say, what other people say, because that's when love gets twisted. Like we can't define love how we want to define it based off our feelings, based off society, based on what other people say or think. Our measuring stick is Jesus. Our measuring stick is this word of God. And the thing is, you can't even love without the help of the Holy Spirit. Because Galatians tells us that, a fr that the fruit of the Spirit is love. First John 4 tells us that whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Things, if you want to love like God, you have to actually, first and foremost, you have to have been born of God. 
You have to have his very spirit living on the inside of you. Because the thing is, when the, spe the, the seed of the Holy Spirit has been deposited inside of you and you water it with the word, every seed produces fruit after its own kind, right? So that's why, how you have the fruit of the spirit. That's how you know if somebody has the Holy Spirit and dwelling on the inside of them. Are they patient? Are they kind? Are they loving? Do they have joy? Do they have peace? Do they have self-control? That is the fruit or the result of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of somebody. And it says that you've been born of God. You have, you have the seed of the Holy Spirit and it says that you know God. It says that you know God. You have a relationship with him. You... <laughs> Because it's hard to imitate somebody that you don't even know, somebody you don't spend time with. They have to be able to rub off on you. Because the thing is, the more time you spend with somebody and the more you know them, the more they start rubbing off on you. Their characteristics start becoming your characteristics. What they say becomes what you say. And that's even true in the natural. The more you hang around people, the more they start rubbing off on you. So the more time you spend in God's presence, the more time you spend in his word and in prayer, he's going to start rubbing off on you. You're going to start loving like him. You're going to start being patient with people that you don't think deserve patience. But he is most certainly patient with us when we don't deserve it. He is loving to us when we don't deserve it. He's forgiven us when we don't deserve it. When we've deserved death, he, he died on the cross and took on the sins of the world so that we could have eternal life. So since we have been born of God, as 1 John tells us, and we're made in his image and we're to imitate God, and God is love, I think it's appropriate to ask the question, are you love? If you replace the word love in this passage with your name, are you love? God is patient, are you? God is kind, are you? Because the thing is we should want to imitate and reflect God. We should want people to see him when they see us, when they hear us so that they can glorify him. So the thing is when you tell somebody that you love them, you have to actually show it or prove it. The thing is, if you love somebody, you have to act like you love them. Jesus didn't just say, hey, I love you, and then leave us to fend for ourselves and to figure out salvation. Because John 3, we all know John 3, 16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He loved us, so he proved it, and he died on the cross. There is literally no greater love, no greater act, no greater demonstration that God could show us that he loves us. This is why love can't be based on feelings. Love is not just a feeling void of action and choice. God didn't feel like going to the cross. He prayed three times, God, take this cup of suffering from me, but not my will, your will be done. And it also says in the Bible that he willingly gave up his life for us. Because the thing is you can't, if love is based on a feeling, then it's conditional. But God loves us unconditionally, even when we don't deserve it. God still died for the sins of the world, knowing that many of us would sin time and time again and choose other things and other people over him time and time again, that people would reject him, that people would not accept his free gift of salvation, yet he still loves us. So what is love? God is love. He is the foundation of love. Love comes from him. Everything he does flows out of love and he gives us the the definition of what biblical love is. And love is a choice and action. Don't just say that you love somebody because we all, we say it like actions speak louder than words. Show me that you love me. Act like you love me. So prayerfully this video, bless you guys and that you gained something from it. So tell me in the comment sections below what you guys gained from this video. What did you learn? What did God speak to you about? Would love to hear it. I love it when you guys leave comments. So please make sure that you leave your comments down below. Um, make sure that you like this video, that you share it with somebody that would be blessed and encouraged by it, and that you're subscribed so that you never miss another video just like this. Until the next video, grace and peace.